Here we go. We're live. Yes, we're live. Welcome. We're doing it in English. We're welcoming the Rav and we're welcoming a very special student, this in black. And Baruch Hashem, we have together such a special place, a special room of Siddiquim. We have Rav, Rav uh, Elgrad, Rav Dayan Elgrad. We have such a merit to have his daily Halaki corner and his wish series. You're welcome to check it out. And together he'll translate the Rav. So together we have such a special opportunity with Nissim Black and, and a Rav and Rav Elgrad. And we'd like everyone to share and be involved in this class online as much as possible. And please, God, we should begin with the first question that Rav Elgrad has. Is it, you have the question? Yes. Baruch Hashem, we're going to start off with a more light question, then we're going to go into some more heavier topics that need to be discussed right now, as we have, unfortunately, been going through some challenging times. But please God, with our Rav, we'll be able to get the inspiration, and with Nisim, his Talmud, to get the, the heart and the love and the inspiration from the music and the soul of someone so special to us. And we're very honored to have him here. Thank you for coming very much. Thank you. Thank you. Please, can we begin? The first question was, how do we cope with children's allergies? Children that are allergic to different things, for example, peanuts, milk. How are we supposed to deal with it on an Amuna point of view? How can we heal them? The Rav wrote about it in the Book of Healing, in the Garden of Healing. What are we supposed to do to cure our children who have different allergies? איך הרב מרפאים אלרגיות של ילדים, ילדים שאלרגיים לכל מיני מוצרים, לפי מה שהרב כתב בספרים שלו? אז האמונה בבור העולם, קודם כל איזה הקדמה, קודם כל איזה הקדמה בכלל לכל ה... מה שאנחנו עכשיו נפגשנו היום. We're meeting here together, so just before we start, we'd like to give a small introduction. Faith is something that belongs to every single person who lives in this world. All the people in the world are the sons of the Creator. In the eyes of the Creator, everyone matters. For the Creator, every person in this world, every man, woman, and child, are His children. When a person speaks to the Creator, the Creator listens to him. And the Creator loves every single person. Just like every father. He loves all of his children. A normal father loves every single child that he has. Is a father going to say, I love this son and that son I don't love? Even though his children, some are short, some are tall. One has blue eyes. Sometimes you have families that there are vast differences between the children. A normal father loves all of his children. It's very important to know that faith belongs to every single person living on this planet equally. And that's why I wrote a book about Emuna for all the people in this world. Because there's no difference. A student from Cairo wrote to me. She told me that she read my book about Emuna. She started speaking to the Creator. She told me that she was sick with something. And she prayed. It didn't really help her. She understood that she needs to start saying thank you. She said thank you and it helped. She said to me that this book is going to bring peace to the world. Why? Because all people are equal. 
דבר שעושה את כל בני אדם שווים זה האמונה. What makes all people equal is אמונה, faith. עכשיו אנו באמת מתייחסים לשאלה ששאלת קודם, איך אדם שהוא, יש לו איזה רגישות, אלרגיה למשהו. עכשיו אנחנו יכולים, עכשיו שיש לנו את הבסיס של האמונה, אנחנו יכולים לענות לכל השאלות. Now that we have the foundations of Amun, the basics, now we can start answering the question how to handle allergies that people have. אז באמת, אדם שיש לו איזשהו אלרגיה, ממש, אני עכשיו כתבתי ספר, אני אשל התודה, וברור השם, ממש אנשים שממש זכו לעשות את החוק של התודה, ובאמת... I wrote a book about gratitude, about saying thank you. And people who actually followed the law of gratitude, they saw miracles above nature. Today, we would especially like to strengthen the black community. Especially for them, Reb Nissim Black is one of my students. He's in our institutes, learning in our yeshiva. Everyone loves him very much. His children learn with my children. They also learn with my own children. Everything is fine. שהוא ידבר עכשיו באנגלית, ויחזק את הקהילה, ועד הבא. אני אפילו רוצה לשאול את מי שאתה מבין את המילה, שהוא מדבר באנגלית, שהוא מדבר באנגלית, שהוא מדבר באנגלית. אנחנו גם נשמח לשמוע שאלות, ולהעלות על שאלות. אנחנו נשמח לשאול את השאלות, ולהעלות על שאלות. אנחנו נשמח לשאול את השאלות, ולהעלות על שאלות, ולהעלות על שאלות, אם יש לך שאלות. תודה רבה. תודה רבה. עכשיו אנחנו מבינים Uh, the pain of the black community um, that has not only affected uh, America, um, but it seems to be starting fires, even literally all around the world. Um, it's a very, very sensitive topic. Um, I've been asked to speak about this in many different places, in many different platforms, um, just to be able to give somewhat of an understanding of what's going on. Um, there are... Um, people of African descent, people of color, people that would be considered black all over the world. Um, and many of them, whether here in Israel, whether in France, whether in, in England, um, each person has their own story. Right now, the biggest uh, issue that we're facing today, um, especially with the, the American black community, is that a lot of people don't understand Um, what took place at the very beginning at the foundation um, of this community. Um, we are discussing um, from 1619 was the first uh, ship that was brought over the Atlantic um, that carried the, the first, first slaves. slaves. Horrible, Horrible conditions. conditions. Um, um, we're, we're talking, talking about, about people that, that were treated beyond Uh, being, being a second class, class you're treated, treated as animals, uh, uh, separation of families, families being, being broken, broken um, and, and, and being persecuted for many, many years. So it's a very, very deep and, and it's a very, very um, hard um, situation right now for the world. Um, my chizik to everybody is like this. First thing I want to say is that there are no klalim. No person can say that they have a monopoly on the truth for the black community. Um, it's very, very hard. Some people don't know how to interpret what's going on if you're outside of the community. Um, people are, uh, who have become very active and, and has lent their help and support and have come be, and have even um, considered themselves an ally to the black community also um, sometimes will find themselves in the dark and not really understand what's going on. But when I say that nobody can say, I myself, if I've experienced racism on a systemic le level, um, I went to a school that was predominantly African-American um, where we didn't have books um, for the, I remember at least for the first three to four years, three years that I was there, sorry. 
And um, and every year we had brand new football uniforms, basketball uniforms, and the things that we were supposed to excel at, but the things that when it came to education, we were last inside of the in, in the state. Um, so there were certain things that were set up in a way that made you feel almost like you couldn't succeed. So I have experienced my share, and there's many other stories. That does not take away from the other people who say that they haven't experienced white privilege, the people that say that they have not experienced uh, racism in their in their in their own um, and in their own way. However, the biggest strength that I could give to people right now is that you know we can learn things from other cultures and from other people. One of the biggest things that we've done, um, not only as Claudius Rowe, as we have looked at how other um, other people and other communities have, have, have handled pandemics. How, how did Rebbe Akiva Eger uh, handle things during the time of uh, the pandemic and outbreak that was happening during this time? So we learned things from different people. We may even look at other cultures to be able to ask them, what did you do? Um, and I think one of the biggest things that we can, that we can learn from this right now, I think, uh, as, a, as a black community, is to um, look at the Jewish community. Um, who was also marginalized um, in Europe, also in the Mizrahi countries, um, second-class citizens, higher tax pay, uh, paying, and also feeling somewhat of the same oppression. Um, one of the things that we can see that has always been um, a part of not only the Jewish community, also to the African-American community, has been one of prayer and faith and hope. Um, and I think that the biggest thing right now is for everybody to sort of silence the world to be able to hear what it is that Hashem is saying to us, to hear what God is saying to us. So when people want to ask, what is it that I can do to help the African-American community, the, the first thing right now I think it is is, is for tefillah. Because right now when the world's getting very, very loud, we need to be able to hear what it is that Hashem is trying to say to us. Um, there have been many different tzaddikim, I don't know if I could say in the presence of a Rav, a Rav Cook, um, that that always were looking for the simanim from what Hashem is saying based on what's happening in the world. We know this about Rabbi Nachman as well. He was always always looking at, he was he would base a lot of his shiurim and his lectures based on the different things and events that were happening in the world that would change um, and have their um, have their effect on, on the things that, that he would say and give over to his students. So right now it's a critical time for the world and the biggest and the only way, the only way out of um, such a such a horrendous time is is by tefillah and crying out. This is uh, we look at uh, the Jewish people as slaves in Egypt, and how do we get out? By crying out to Hashem, by praying to Hashem, and uh, uh, the black community especially has been known for its um, love of spirituality and a love of God, and it's a critical time for the world. Um, a critical time for the people um, specifically, and we cannot lose handle on the things that have been able to help us survive the 400 years of oppression and slavery um, to date. So um, that's my two cents on what's going on right now and willing to take any questions anybody has. On the Matzav, we have had many people ask about the concern uh, with Panasa, with financially and with health and now with safety and also with how to understand um, from the Rav and on the basis of what Nissan just said with the situation with the uh, with the black community and how we can as Jews like help be be a part of that process that was the big question <laughs> באמת הניסיון שם, כמו שאנחנו שומעים, ממש יש להם ניסיון קשה מאוד. ה-trial that people are, going, are now going abroad is a really difficult trial. כמו שאמרנו, כמו ששאלו, בעניין של פרנסה, ממש... בפרט העניין של פרנסה, שבן אדם... כשיש לו פרנסה, בסדר, עוד יכול להתמודד עם שאר הבעיות. כשאין לו פרנסה בכלל, הוא שם מצב קשה מאוד. 
And like people asked about the livelihood, and especially about livelihood, because when a person has a stable livelihood, he's able to cope with a lot of things. But when his livelihood is now at stake, he finds it very difficult to cope with other difficult situations that come towards him. ממש יעשה, ממש, יעשה איזה, ממש איזה נס, ושככה יהיה, לא יצא על אנשים, שלא יצא, שאין להם פרנסה, לא יצא. I pray that the Creator shall bring a miracle that people will have no sorrow concerning their livelihood, that everyone should have a good and stable livelihood. אבל אני פה עכשיו פונה לכל אחד ואחד. But I'm now addressing every single person. כולם יש להם אמונה. Everyone has faith. באמונה, רק מה, מה שאנשים לא יודעים, שאמונה זה לדבר עם הבורא. What people don't know is that faith means speaking to the Creator. בדרך כלל אנשים חושבים, אמונה זו, אני מאמין, וזהו. Normally people think that faith means, well, okay, I believe, and that's it. אמונה זה לדבר עם, עם הבורא. Faith means speaking to the Creator. וזה מה שאני רוצה לחזק את העם, כשאדם נמצא עכשיו... ואיזה ניסיון כזה, אין לו פרנסה, אין לו משהו קשה. And that's what I'd like to strengthen you with. When a person has such a trial that he has no livelihood, it is a difficult situation. שינסה. He should try. יהיה לבד באיזה מקום. Be alone somewhere. וידבר עם הבורא. And speak to the creator. בשפה שלך. In your language. בפשטות. In your words, simply. Like a child that speaks to his father. Say to him, Father in heaven. The creator. You created me. Thank you for everything that you've given me so far. And now I'm in a difficult situation. I need a good livelihood. Give me a livelihood. בכמה מילים שידבר, כל שכן אם הוא קצת יאריך יותר בתפילה, יראה שהבורא ייתן לו פרנסה, יראה איזה עין בעין. Everyone should try it, and you'll see that with a few words that you speak to the Creator, and of course if you speak longer to the Creator, with more words you will see, the Creator will give you livelihood. כי האמונה, because faith, והדיבורים, and speaking, שמדבר עם הבורא, and you speak with the Creator, הם כלים, their vessels, קבל את ה... To accept the abundance that the Creator wants to bring from above. A person thinks, how is the Creator going to give me? The Creator has many ways to give you what He wants. What we're speaking about now, faith, it's not just a solution for livelihood. It's a way of life. For every person in this world, this needs to be his path. Saying thank you. Thank you for the chair that I have. Who gave me the chair? The Creator. Everything that I have is from the Creator. Thank you for the table. Thank you for the electricity. Thank you for every breath that I'm able to take. Saying thank you and asking. Ask. If a person now says, I don't believe there's a table here. Everyone will say to him, are you okay? What does it make a difference if you believe or you don't believe? It doesn't change reality. There is a table. Whether you believe or don't believe, it doesn't change reality. It's the same thing. There is a creator. He created the world. And he creates the world. And he supervises the world. And he sees you. And he sees every single person. And he hears you. And if you speak to him, he'll hear. 
Whether you believe or you don't believe, it doesn't change reality. I always see the Creator. How do I see the Creator? Because I ask, and the things that I ask for work out. You can say that it was a coincidence the first time. The second time you can say it was a coincidence. But when things happen all the time, all through my life, <laughs> also too, I would say the same thing as a Rav who has definitely strengthened me in my own faith and my own amuna. Um and and I'd like to say also to the piggyback off of the Rav, if I will, about uh, the second part of Amuna, which is the bitachon, the faith, that, uh, the the trust that comes in with it. A person definitely didn't think twice before they sat in the chair. Me, myself, I didn't think twice before I came in here and I sat in this chair. I came in and I sat down. Now, before I sat in the chair, I saw it. By the time I turned my back to the chair, the chair was behind me, and I didn't see the chair anymore, and I still sat down, and I didn't have one doubt, no effect, that the chair was going to be there and that the chair was going to hold me. Um, we have a lot of times in life, especially during this time, where we may have experienced Hashem, may have seen Hashem move in our lives in some type of way, and then we are forced to turn around in order to fall back and to lean on Hashem, and because we turned around, all of a sudden it's as if we He won't catch us or He won't hold us up. But the same faith that we don't we have in the chair, we don't have in Hashem. Hashem will also hold us, and Hashem will also help us in, uh, and, and keep us during these times. Um, I'd like to share a few, I, at least I'll give over a story myself um, in this particular area, and, I, and it give me some chizik and strength in me also too during this time. Um, a lot of people know me for the song Hashem Melech. Um, right before um, we did the, the song for Hashem Melech, I uh, was also in a very, very, I was in my own recession, in my own crisis. Uh, we were three months behind on rent. Um, I didn't know where my next dime was going to come from. And inside of me, um, there was a, there was my, my, my neshama, I felt like it was screaming um, that, you know, I wasn't where I was supposed to be in terms of my career path. I always have been the type of person um, that it, it, it has always been hard for me um, to not do what it is that I feel that Hashem put me here to do. Um, so to make a long story short, um, during this time, it happened on numerous occasions that I was reading the books of Arav, and I will open up, and there's a sipur, there's a story about Harav that talks about when Harav was facing a very similar situation, that he went out to go talk to Hashem. He went to go work for Hashem. So there was this story was written in maybe three or four different books, and I was randomly open to this every single time. So I took it as a siman. This is something that uh, I wanted to take up on myself to do. Um, this did not sound like a very good or winning plan for my wife, however. Um, so I remember when I told her, I said, listen, hon, you know, I think I want to go out and I'm going to go work for Hashem. And she said, no, you need to go get another job and another job and another job. And uh, the conversation, I remember at the time it ended with uh, me telling my wife that, you know, I really feel like this is from Hashem and, you know, let's dive on in and see what Hashem is telling us. And um, the the uh, career path at the time um, that was in question was music. And my wife had, uh, had come down maybe two days later, and she said to me, what do dreams mean? And I said to her, I don't know what dreams mean, you know, what's a dream? It may mean something, maybe not, depends on what time you went to sleep, when did you have the dream, whatever. Um, I said, anyway, what did you dream about? She said, no, nothing, nothing. So now I was very curious. I had uh, developed uh, very, very early in my years a method to know whether, uh, uh, whether or not, if you wanted to know something from somebody, when and how to ask them. So I noticed that if you ask people right as they're going to sleep, you know, right when they're on the brink, that sometimes up, time halfway sleep, then you're gonna most likely get the answer to a question. So I waited till my wife was almost asleep. 
I asked her this question, you know, what did you dream about? She said you, uh, you had a dream. And she said, you know, the other day after we had talked, I went, I spent some time with Hashem. I said some Tehillim. I talked to him on the matzav. And when I went to sleep, I woke up. And um, I, right before I woke up, I had a dream that you're on the stage before thousands of people and so many people's lives were changing and coming closer to Hashem because of what you were doing. She said, but don't take this and write this off. After that, I went and quit the job that I had. And I went out every single day for six hours, 22 days. I went out to go talk to Hashem, to go work for Hashem. And throughout this time, there were many brachas that people were saying to me. I were going with everything that my neshama felt. I didn't know what the matzah was going to be. Three months behind, we didn't know where the next dime was coming from. I had to look my kids in the in the face every day, and it was a very, very hard, hard time. And uh, day 17, um, um, the song Hashem Ela came out with God Elbaz. And I got a call from him that said, Achi, we made a hit. So on the back end, he was able to see how much people were really taken to the song. And the next day after that song came out, I got calls from all over the world, and I've been traveling ever since. I'm doing what it is that Hashem wanted me to do. So I want to strengthen um, everybody that during this time, and myself as well, times of prayer, because, you know, just you know, just because you've seen the Yamsuf get split one time doesn't mean that you're going to have necessarily the Muna that you need to have the next time. So um, I want to give everybody Chizik also, too, if I could, uh, in a Rob's name, to uh, to strengthen yourself and with the feelers. Right. The third question we had was from a very um, young follower of ours, very appreciative, and she wanted to ask about moving to Eretz Israel, making Aliyah to Eretz Israel. Is it the Rabbanan? Is it the Raisa? I personally answered in our Amuna weekly class that we have here. Amuna is our future class about that maybe you know it's not really whether it's the Raisa or the Rabbanan, but it's a relationship with Hashem, and Hashem wants you here. But we'd like to hear from from Harab what what is the right answer, and also Nisim. Um, Black, who had the schuss to also move to Eretz as well. I personally had the merit to host his first show in 2013, and he said he's going to come live here, like he's coming back. And <laughs> people say that and don't do it, but Nissan Black did it, and we're honored to have you here again in our, in our country, in our home, and in, you know, in our studio, and we'd like to hear from you also, together with the Rav. Nishala Shela Rav, Legabe Ali Ali Eretz Israel, Aim Zed Deoraita, Aim Zed De Rabbanan, Rabbi Eliyahu Amar, Shezel Kulkach Kashu, האם זה דאורייתא או דרבנן, אלא זה יותר על הקשר שיש לאדם עם השם לגור כאן בארץ ישראל. שואלים לגבי המצב, מה לעשות לגבי השאלה הזו? ודאי ש... אני הבנתי שהרבה יהודים עכשיו, קשה להם שם, המון, המון. מאוד קשה להם עם הפרנסה, עם... קשה להם. אני יודע שהרבה יהודים מפעילים... that it's very difficult now living abroad, both with their livelihood problems, with financial issues, and with other issues that are happening now abroad. Also concerning our relationship with education and with the Yiddishkeit, with learning Torah, it is much easier for a Jew to live here in Eretz Yisrael. The most important thing is to take this process through prayer, through peace of mind, with peace and happiness. Do not dismantle or break up a family because you want to make Aliyah and the other side doesn't want to make Aliyah. Everything needs to be done through prayer. <laughs> ממש כדאי לו, ממש, הרבה שאלו, אומרים, כל כך טוב להם פה. אבל הכל, 
כל באהבה, כמו שהוא אומר. It is worth your while for anyone who can to make Aliyah. Many have asked, many are very, very happy here. It's worth your while. Okay, can, can we hear from this one? Yeah. Um, I would say also to, um, as one who's been to some degree keeping an eye on what's watching, I mean, and watching uh, what's going on in, uh, in America um, specifically, Um, there's been other issues around the world also too in Europe for so long and in other places. Um, there is a major um, uh, feeling right now um, that you know the places that may have felt so safe for Yidden are, are beginning to not feel so safe um, for Yidden. Um, as America um, starts to turn, which is somewhat of a leader um, in the world that other countries look to, um, We are witnessing, you know, at the same time everybody's talking about racism because obviously it's the, you know, it's, it's, the, uh, it's the show and the matinee right now. And this is, this is definitely what, what we all need to be discussing. Um, and at the same time, there's been rising numbers of anti-Semitism and the, it feels very, very unsafe there. Um, and, and here nor there, whether a person decides off of that they're going to make the move or you decide that you're not going to uh, uh, make the move or whatever, the, whatever it is, I think, you know, only to strengthen what Rav is saying, that all these things have to be done um, with Yeshua Dat and with a lot of prayer. Um, it, it would seem and it would appear that that would be the... Um, There's a, there's a major urgency uh, for it right now, but it's definitely something that people have to look into to make sure you're doing things um, the right way. I would like to say on my own story, I, since I moved to Eretz Israel, which has been now four years, um, I haven't had a single regret uh, about making the move, uh, me or my family. Um, we've had our ups, we've had our, had our downs. Um, but there's nothing like being in this land. It's, it's nothing. And this is coming from a person who has traveled to a lot of places <laughs> over the last four years. Almost any place that has a Jewish community, I've been there. Not every place, but almost all of them. I've been there, and I will tell you that um, I've never um, I've never been to one place and said, Oh well, maybe maybe this uh, this would have been a good second choice even for my family, um, because Eretz Israel there's such a um, there's a warmth and there's something different. A tree is different in Eretz Israel than what it is in Chutz um, the, the the water is different, the air is different. So and and there's a certain kesher that you that you have. Um, me myself, we moved out of Yerushalayim um, uh, a year ago. Me and my family. And my Kesha now to Eretz Yisrael has even grown, um, being closer to, you know, driving out to the Gush. And, you know, I was in, um, which is actually not close to where I live, but I was even, I've gone to, I was in Getty the other day, you know, where David HaMelech was running from Shaul HaMelech. And, and, and to be in such a place, this place comes alive and it talks to the Neshama, it talks to the soul, so... If I can encourage anybody, it would be enough for that, for all the spiritual reasons that um, a person should be here that, you know, maybe in the Shama is longing for. However, I wouldn't allow the, the fear um, to take hold of you of what's going on. Um, I think it's, it's better to move here out of Yeshua Dat and, and a major Ratzon just because of what Eretz Yisrael is and what it means to you and not to... Um, do it out of the fear of what's going to happen over there because it, as soon as things die down, then, you know, your the decision that you made, um, you may not be so comfortable with the decision that you made. So that's my two cents. Thank you very much. I want to thank Harav. I want to say that Harav is my name. He is my name. I have to mention that my rabbi and mentor, Rabbi Yudazev Leibovich, who was the head of the secret and hindered tzaddikim in this world, he specifically said, tell the Jews in America that they should make Aliyah come to live in Eretz Yisrael. If not, a time will come 
הלוואי ויוכלו לעלות עם החליפה שלהם. That I wish that they will be able to make aliyah with their suits on their back. אז אני אמרתי מה ששמעתי. I just said what I heard from my rabbi. So we have a Baruch Hashem, such chizuk from such a meeting together with Harav, Shalomorish and Nisim Black and Harav Van Elgrad. And we'd like to invite everyone weekly to join us with Harav, these Moses and Nefesh, to make these classes now in all languages and thank the team. We're surrounded by wonderful people around us with all the cameras. We want to thank them all, all their great um, services. And it's amazing to have this set up. But the, the biggest honor is that we were able to host this in black on our first session together, our first Amuna class QA with Rav Orish and also Rav Elgrad together to be able to do this with such clarity that we, please God, will get to all the questions. There were other questions that came up during the live feed and in the following weeks we shall get there. But we want to thank again and, and invite you all to follow Nissan Black on his channels, all the channels. And I myself are also connected to that, so I have in the gear. But we should also have lots of bookings. Nissan Black is able to speak like we saw so well and inspire. And I think he's going in the way of the Rav very much in a strong, true way. And we can all get inspiration that, that should shine to the, all the world as the Rav is doing himself in all the languages. We're, we're translating um, all the Muna classes into all the languages and all the different places that we can. And Nissim is a leader in, in joining the Rav with that. And we'd invite everyone to join Nissim together also with his music and share it. And please God, we'll get together again somehow with health and, and wealth and everything we need so we can dance together and rejoice and be Sameer <laughs> with Simcha, Amiti, with true joy. And please God, everyone should be healthy. So we'll see you again next week. This time, hopefully maybe a little bit more on time. Maybe 11 o'clock is the new time. Let's go according to the rub <laughs> schedule and be flexible, everyone out there. And thank you so much. And thanks again. I'm looking forward to do this again. Please God with Nisim himself. Maybe, maybe he'll come back. And maybe we'll even do a show in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. This is the show. Thank you to everyone who tuned in.